Today, a lot of people across the globe are fighting a pandemic called as blood sugar or diabetes. Imagine you have access to a solution wherein you can just click a photograph of a food item that you want to consume. The solution basically tells you that the food item is either high on glycemic index or low on glycemic index. Once it recommends whether the glycemic index is high or low, it also gives you a recommendation that should you actually consume this food item or not? If yes, then how much? So this is the video where you will see magic unfold and for people who want to kind of try this out, I will share across the GitHub link in the description section of the video. Feel free to try this solution out and let me know how you feel about the solution that I've implemented. Without wasting any further time, let's jump to the coding section now. Now that the introduction is out of our way, let me show you how magic will unfold using Python. So let's begin. I require the Google's generative AI library as well as Gradio. So these are the two libraries that I'll quickly install. Just to give you some background while the installation is going on, I'm using a Google Collab session. If you're running this locally on your machine, then you have to basically install it once and then you are all set up for using the Google's generative AI solution. So this is something that I wanted to specify. The installation is finally complete. Let's go to the import section now. So these are the libraries or these are the functions that I require in the entire execution of the script. So I'll quickly import them as well. So this is a small disclaimer from my end. There are chances that the library may change in the future. The previous versions of the generative AI library don't have support for the Gemini models, which is where the version is very critical for your usage. So the version that I'm using is 0.3.1. When you happen to see this video in the future, the version would be different, but this is like the base version that you require in order to use the Gemini models. Now let's go forward. In order for you to start Google's Gemini Vision Pro model, you require a secret key. You can easily get the secret key from Google's AI Studio website. So that is something that I've already taken for my account. Luckily for me, in Google Collab, there is something called as secrets, which I'm currently using. So I have my API key in form of a secret and the secret key name is Gemini underscore key, which is something that I'm utilizing. So what I do is I kind of import user data from google.collab. I kind of supply Google's generative AI models with the API key that is only accessible by me. So that is something that I'm doing with this piece of code. So I'll quickly run this cell as well. There are some default configurations that are available once you start using Google's AI studio. I have picked up the default configuration as it is. I've not made any modifications. So be it the temperature, top underscore P, top underscore K, max underscore output underscore tokens. All of this is something that I've kept as the default value. Similarly, the safety settings, whatever were the default values, I've kind of picked them up as it is. So I'll quickly run this cell as well. The next thing that I do is I create an instance of the model. So I call the genai.generative model. I supply the model name currently as on December 2023. You have two major models that are available. One is Gemini Pro model, which is text only. If you are playing around with images, which is what we plan to do in this particular example, then you require the Gemini Pro vision model, which is what I've supplied here. I also pass in the configurations, which is where the generation underscore config variable comes in. Similarly, we had all our safety settings in safety underscore settings variable, which is what I supply here. Given that I've now supplied everything that is required, let's go forward and create an instance of the variable generative model and save it into a variable called as model. So let me quickly run this cell. Now all of the skeleton is up and running. What I have to do next is what I'll show you right now is I have created a function called as input underscore image underscore setup which basically accepts the location in form of a string. If an image is present in that particular location, then it will add it into a variable called as image underscore parts. If there is no such file that is present, then it will raise a file not found error. So this is what is happening here. So technically in this particular variable called as image underscore parts, 
इट्स बेसिकली अ लिस्ट कंटेनिंग मल्टीपल डिक्शनरी सो यू कैन इनपुट मल्टीपल इमेजेस टूगेदर वन इमेज करस्पॉन्ड्स टू वन डिक्शनरी इन द डिक्शनरी द फर्स्ट की वैल्यू पेयर इज माइम टाइप सो माइम टाइप इन आर केस गिवन दैट वी आर अपलोडिंग अ इमेज इज इमेज स्लैश जे पी जी एंड सिमिलरली डेटा विल बी द एक्चुअल पाथ एंड आई हैव टू रीड द डेटा फ्रॉम दैट पर्टिकुलर पाथ विच इज़ वेयर ऑल द डेटा वुड डिसाइड इन द डेटा की ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर डिक्शनरी दैट्स देयर ओके सो नाउ दैट दिस पर्टिकुलर इमेज सेक्शन इज सेटअप लेट्स गो फॉरवर्ड Now what I'll do next is I'll create a response function. The response function takes in two inputs. First, it will take in the input prompt. The second, it will take in the image location. What it will do with the image location is it will create the image prompt, which is what we've been able to achieve in the previous function. What it will do is it will take the input image and it will create an input prompt. based on the input images that you've supplied so that is where the image prompt comes in the next piece is i create a variable called as prompt underscore parts which is a list the first part of the list contains the input prompt so it basically contains what questions i want to ask to my model the second part is the image prompt that i've defined above what i do next is i call the generate underscore content function from the model I pass in this particular concatenated prompt and I get a response. Whatever response I receive is what I return in form of response dot text. So let me go forward and run this particular cell to import this particular function in memory. Now everything is set up except the prompt. So prompt is where the actual magic happens. So this is the prompt. So here the prompt goes like this as an expert specializing in assessing the suitability of fruits and foods for individuals with diabetes your task involves analyzing input images featuring various food items your first objective is to identify the type of fruit or food present in the image subsequently you must determine the glycemic index of the identified item based on this glycemic index provide recommendations on whether individuals with diabetes can include the detected food item in their diet or not if the food item is deemed suitable specify the recommended quantity for consumption so here what i'm doing is i want google's gemini pro vision model to firstly identify which fruit or food is present in this particular image based on whatever it detects i want it to now tell me the glycemic index of this particular food item if the limit is low then how much can that particular person consume is what the recommendation would be if the glycemic index is high then straight away the model should tell me that you shouldn't consume this particular food item so this is how i've smartly created this particular prompt what i do next is i kind of run this particular cell to create this particular variable called as input underscore prompt now what i have done is i have created a simple interface using gradio wherein the first function is basically defining the file path for the input file that you upload if the file path exists or if there is an input image that i pass in then it basically calls the generate underscore gemini response and it passes the input prompt that is the prompt that we have defined above as well as the file path that is the part to the image location once it kind of gets the response what it will return is the file path that is the actual image itself as well as the response that is what is the response that google's gemini pro vision model returns so this is the first function the second is where i've defined the blocks so here is where you have the text box which will show out the output here is the input image block finally you have a combined output so i've created a list which will kind of combine the text output as well as the image output so this is the upload button that i've directly borrowed from gradio's website this and finally upload underscore button dot upload i specify the upload file which is the function that i've created upload button is the button that i've created and the combined output is the output of the entire upload interface that i create Finally I launch this so I'll quickly run this If all the cells are working fine before this I think it shouldn't give any error so here is where I have my interface up and running let me click on this temporary link to show you the entire interface in its full glory 
So here is the interface. If you are pre-diabetic or if you have diabetes and if you want recommendations from AI, whether you should consume a food item or not, then this interface is what you can utilize. So I'll quickly upload the first image. So I have this particular image of something that we all love, which is something that I'll let AI tell us. So I'll upload this particular first image. So I've uploaded the image. Let's wait for the response to come in. So here the response is the image contains a donut. Donuts have a high glycemic index and are not recommended for individuals with diabetes. This is the response that I'm getting from Google's Gemini Pro Vision model. Amazing, isn't it? Imagine the amount of things that you can do with this amazing model. So what you can do right now as well is you can create an Android application wherein you can have an image upload button, capture an image in real time and have a recommendation thrown out using Google's Gemini Pro Vision model. Amazing, right? Now, this is such a big lifesaver for a lot of people who are going through diabetes or blood sugar where they're kind of confused whether they should consume a particular food item or not. Well, this is there to help them out, right? So I'll upload one more image. Let's see if that is something that we can consume or not. So here is the response. The image basically contains almonds. Almonds have a glycemic index of zero, which means that they have a minimal effect on blood sugar levels. Therefore, individuals with diabetes can consume or include almonds in their diet. The recommended quantity for consumption is one ounce or about 23 almonds per day. So this is the other response that I wanted to show you. It wouldn't classify every food item into a high glycemic index. So technically, I wanted to give it to different unique set of inputs so that uh, we are able to assess whether the model is performing correctly or not. And to be very honest, it's doing a tremendous job in terms of recommending whether we should consume a food item or not based on whether you have blood sugar or not. So uh, this is something that I wanted to demonstrate using code. Well, this is how you can use generative AI to create magical solutions that can make a social impact. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you do like the content that I create on my channel, it would be super motivating if you can press the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to be notified for amazing videos that I plan to create in the future. Thank you so much for watching the video.